it's Alex from Menu Docs, and in today's episode, we're going to be returning to the MongoDB series. Today is episode 2, and we're going to begin the setup for MongoDB and all the fun things that stem from that. Alright, so first things first, welcome back everyone. I hope you all enjoyed yesterday's video. Today we have four items to cover. First off, we have our introduction slide to get done. Next up is our local install of MongoDB. With that, we're going to be covering the download and install, and everything that needs to be done to make sure that it is ready for the series and ready for you to use in general. Following that, we have how to set up and configure MongoDB Atlas, which we'll refer to as our cloud version of MongoDB. Then, we have our wrap-up slide to finish off the episode and get us ready for next week. Alright guys, so without further ado, Let's get into the episode and begin setting up MongoDB. Alright guys, so we're going to be starting with the local installation of MongoDB. Easily, we're just going to be going to mongodb.com. This is going to be linked in the description. Make sure you go under software and hit community server. It's the free and open source community. It has in-memory storage engines, encrypted, advanced security, all of that stuff. At the time of recording, this is version 4.4.0 is the most current. Though you can you can play around with that. Uh, of course, the platform is whichever one you have. There are all kinds of them. I'm using Windows. In the package, you can either use zip to download it as a binary, or you can use the MSI package, which is what I'm going to be using here. The community server will install the command line interface, which we're going to need to talk to our database. Now, we aren't going to get into that in this episode, but we will in the next episode. So, if you're downloading locally, I'm going to show you how to make sure that it installed the command line correctly. So, you're just going to hit download here, and I'm actually going to be doing it with you. You do not need to fill out any of this. I uninstalled my MongoDB to be able to show you all exactly how to set it up. So, I'm going to give it just a few seconds here. It shouldn't take very long because it's not huge for now. And then once it finishes, you're just going to open that. And it should bring you to this. Now, I'm installing the 64-bit version. If you're using a 32-bit install of Windows uh, 10, which is what I'm currently using, you'll get the 32-bit installer. So, you can read through these if you want. I've read through them a couple of times, so I know they're, and I'm going to accept them. Um, you can do complete, which I'll click in a second. You can also do custom, which allows you to choose all the things that you would like installed. If you do custom, ensure that you install under miscellaneous tools, that you go here, and you select that will be installed on local hard drive. Make sure that miscellaneous tools is installed. Now, we're just going to hit complete, and I recommend that in, in general. So, I would leave these as default. You're going to run your service as a network service user. This is just your account domain and stuff if you run as a local or domain user, but as a network service user works quite well. So, you can see the latest version about MongoDB Compass. We'll talk about installing Compass in just a minute, but we're going to uncheck that box for now because this will install Community Compass and we're going to install a more recent version. And you hit install, and it will ask you for an administrator prompt, which can take anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds because, well, Windows is slow. If you're installing on Linux, this is going to go much faster. Sadly, I'm not going to cover a Linux install, but I'm sure there are hundreds of tutorials out there that explain how to do a Linux install, so I will put a link in the description for Linux and Mac OS users. So, we'll be back in a second once this finishes. And there we go. Now all we have to do is click Finish, and as far as we're concerned, we have one more thing to install, and then we're good to go. So, under software, you go to compass, scroll down, all the way past all of this information here, hit download. Now, 
you're going to select this version, you're going to download the zip file, but I'd recommend Windows 64 bit 7 plus MSI, it'll save you a bit of a headache there. And then you can download that. Also, we're going to talk about this in the cloud version, although I'm going to recommend against it then. But if you would like, feel free to download this while you're here. MongoDB Compass is just the GUI version. I'm not going to download this because I already have it installed, but once you have both of these installed, come back and we'll keep going. Alright guys, so once you finish that, you're going to want to go to your program files or wherever you installed it in the MongoDB folder, select the server, the version that you installed, and go to bin. Under here, you're going to click, double click on the MongoD, give it a moment, double click on mongo.exe, and there you go. Now, you can talk to the server itself. If this popped up, and you see the server generated the startup warnings while booting. Access control is not enabled for the database. Read write can read write access to data and configuration is unrestricted. Then you are set. Now, if you all have watched to this part and would not like to continue through the cloud bit, here is a timestamp on the screen right here that will tell you exactly where to go for the next bit. Alright guys, those of you that are here for the cloud installation, we're going to start talking about how to set up the cloud bit, but first, we have a few things to download. So first off, we're going to go to software and compass, and we're going to hit try it now. This will take us to the tools page. So, MongoDB compass is going to be the GUI version of everything we're going to do here. So. Make sure you select your platform, I'm going to use the MSI of course, and hit download. I already have this installed, so I'm not going to go through that process. Now, if you would like to use the CLI for cloud, I will teach you how to use it. Although I recommend against it quite heavily, the GUI works a lot better. If you'd like to use this, hit download. It'll download a zip, and then you can... We can extract it to our. Uh, we'll extract it to our desktop for now. I'll move it before next episode. But this is what you need to extract. There we go. Hmm. It did not go as expected. Do I? You might get this info. Just run it anyway. There you go. This is a command line tool. So, now, if you open your command, type Mongo, there you go. You should get Mongo shell version. If not, make sure the path to that exe file is in your environment variables. There's plenty of places to show you how to do that. I don't think I'm going to explain how to add an environment variable because that can reveal some sensitive information about me personally. So, let's talk about setting things up in the cloud. First things first, you're going to want to sign in. I'm going to sign in with Google because that's how I put all my things in. You can hit the sign up button to sign up for your own account. You'll be dropped into a project and an organization. Don't need to worry about either of those for now. We'll be explaining those later on in sharing your data with others. Now, let's start by hitting this big green build a cluster button. For now, we're going to be using the free shared clusters. Although, I personally use a dedicated cluster, we're going to use the sandbox free cluster for now. Select like your cloud provider, your region, you can choose whichever region you want. You select your cluster tier, I would leave it as sandbox because it's free forever and it's 512 megabytes of storage. If you're going over that, you should be able to pay for that. No backups, MongoDB 4.4. You'll see why I say this in a little bit. And you can change your cluster name. I'm going to name this tutorial for now. But 
you can change it to whatever you want. Then just hit create cluster. Now this will take a few minutes for it to provision the cluster itself. So as it says here, new clusters take between one to three minutes to provision. So guys, we'll be back here in about one to three minutes to find out if it works. Alright guys, so once your sandbox cluster has been created, what we're going to do is we're going to go to this database access tab. We're going to hit add new database user. You can set this to any of the things you want. Keep in mind AWS IAM is quite complicated to set up. You can use certificates, but you have to get a little creative with that. So we're just going to use passwords for now. We're just going to name this user. We're going to make the password here. Menu docs rules. Keep in mind, you all will not be able to connect to this database once this video goes public. So make sure it has read and write to any database. And if you would like it to be a temporary user, then select that and hit add user. And as you notice, there's six hours left on this user once the changes are deployed. So again, get comfortable for a few minutes because it has to apply this action to all of the clusters that MongoDB affects. Alright guys, there we go. Our user has been created. Now, you can connect to this database using this connect button right here. Now, you would normally want to just add your current IP address. I'm just going to allow access from everywhere for the time being. Now we're going to choose a connection method. We're going to be using the connect using MongoDB Compass for now. We'll talk about all of these connection methods in another episode, so we're really just going to close this for the time being. Keep in mind that this user access, once it is done, is going to be crucial for next episode. Next episode, we're going to meet Skelmis. He's going to talk to you all about connecting to this. When he does, he's going to assume that you all already know how to create a user. If you do not watch this episode... There you go. So, right here, you can hit Collections to view all of your data. And we're going to hit the load sample data set. Although, this can take a little bit, so we aren't actually going to do this till we do connections. We also have command line tools, which is just some connection stuff here. We'll talk about that another time. And you also have all of this other interesting information that I'm not going to cover. Although, I will be covering charts in the near future. You can also edit your configuration at any time. And if you really wanted to get crafty with the things you can do, go to collections, overview, and then you can see all three shards that your system runs on. And it typically runs on a replica set of three. You can also link realm maps, which we aren't going to cover. But that's it for the cloud section of things. Let's continue on. Let's wrap up the episode. And let's get ready for next week. All right, everyone. Thank you all for coming out today. Many docs would not be the same without you all. This has been a great start to the series. Next week, we'll be tackling the connection step for all of our platforms. So everyone, thank you for coming out to Menu Docs today. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And as always, happy coding.